to show you some of my recent acquisitions because I have got some things of beauty here, some, some brand new tools and some not so new tools and, and a piece of wood. Th th there's a sort of theme running through this. Uh, the first couple of items aren't brand new, I've had them a while, um, but I thought I'd show you them because they, they act as a sort of intro to the other pieces. First up is this record number 73 plane. This is a, a real beast. This is a, this is a shoulder plane. The blade is, is just very, very slightly wider than the, the sole of the plane. And this allows you to, to plane right up into corners um, if you're doing, for instance, tenons. Um, <laughs> this isn't really meant to be a demo. I was just seeing if I got a, a lump of wood I could, I could show you. But the, the idea is that you've, you, you've, got a, you've got a corner and you can, you can plane straight up into the corner and I'll end up planing into my bench, so I won't. Um, but it's, it's beautifully made. Um, there's, a, there's a seam at the front here. Um, which you, you, you cannot see, the, the engineering, and I just realised I've done what I, I usually end up doing, catching the corner of the blade. You've got to be a little bit careful with these because the, uh, the blade is exposed. Um, but uh, the, 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 the front of the, the plane is adjustable, so you can, uh, you can a, a adjust the gap for, for optimum planing. Um, I'll just very quickly show you how the blade works. Um, there's a tensioning knob here, which you can... <laughs> oh dear. There we go. So this part lifts out to explode, expose the blade, which sits down there. There is an adjuster, a screw adjuster, which is something I like about, uh, about this because uh, I don't get on well with planes where you have to hammer them. More on that later. But that's how it all sits together. Um, there's like a, there's a clever little pivoting mechanism here that so when you tighten it here it's actually pressing down here on the blade so it really holds it firmly in place and it adjusts in and out using the screw adjuster although it's usually easier just to slacken that off a little bit before you pull the blade back out and then you tighten it up again but yes shoulder plane now the next piece is this this is one of my favorite planes and, and I'm, I'll show you this as, as a sort because of, the two sort of combine and lead into the third piece this beautiful little thing is the Veritas miniature block plane. I've used this in a few videos and uh, I've always had comments uh, from people about it. People seem fascinated by it and rightly so. It's, it's a lovely little tool. It, it's a proper block plane in miniature. Um, there's, there's a little screw which, which holds the, uh, the, the cap on. Um, and it, it's, its adjustment is, is very similar to a full size plane we can just slacken that off and you can see how the blade sits in there but it has its little you can adjust sideways and backwards and forwards this little Norris adjuster and get rid of that and um, very very simple and very very effective beautifully engineered and it is, it is one of my favorite planes and works remarkably well so that's the miniature block plane but what happens when you combine the function of that with the concept of that. This is lovely. Brand new tool alert. Uh, mini shoulder plane. Again from Veritas. And I, I can see myself one day owning all of their miniature tools. This is beautiful. Incidentally, this lump of foam is, is rust inhibiting. You mustn't throw it away. You keep it with the plane. So... <laughs> That is, is basically this, exactly the same concept as that. Let's put that that way up. Um, functionally identical. Uh, the same concept with the, um, the, the, the pivot and the pressure on the blade here, the screw adjuster. Um, the only thing that this doesn't do, um, that this does, is uh, this, the, uh, the nose adjusts. This one doesn't, it's fixed. But... Um, Look at that, it's absolutely beautiful. Same function as this, uh, getting into corners. Um, great for tidying up uh, binding channels um, on guitars, um, getting really neat um, tenons and stuff. I think I'd actually prefer to use this than this. This is really heavy and it's kind of industrial. Um, most of the work I do is uh, a much smaller scale and uh, this will, uh, will 
have a, a, a great place in my armory of tools. Really pleased with that. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, leading on from that item, another brand new plane. And uh, let me open it up and show you. And this time, this is a palm plane. It's con con um, <laughs> convex. <laughs> it's got a convex sole, um, but it's convex that way. So this is for uh, planing out channels. I, I really shouldn't use it on my bench. Um, I don't know how sharp this is out of the box, but the blade probably isn't. Uh, mm -mm. That's probably a rather coarse adjustment. I'll come to how you adjust this blade in, uh, in a bit, but uh, yeah, that's a bit coarse. But you get the idea. I should uh, probably have the uh, blade adjusted back a little bit, but uh, perfect for getting little, uh, little channels. A little curiosity about this is that to tighten the blade you do indeed turn clockwise, but this is actually a left-handed thread, so turning clockwise is actually pulling this adjuster up to force the blade down and into the into the uh, the, the shoe. Um, so to, to remove the blade we slacken off by turning anti-clockwise, which is sending the adjuster that way. We then push the blade fully out and then we can turn clockwise and if we've got it in the right place, <laughs> great job of demoing Susie, there we go, then the adjuster will come all the way through and you can remove the blade and sharpen it. Sharpening could be tricky on this because it's got a radius on it. Um, initial sharpening, uh, I mean this is, this is pretty sharp to begin with, um, I might give it a touch of the 8000 grit stone. Um, but uh, I guess as time goes by I might uh, get the radius a little bit inaccurate. The, uh, the instructions do actually tell you what the radius is on here because it's, it's sharp and uh, you, you, you can't just sharpen this straight on a stone, you've got to kind of be working it this way. Um, maybe I need to make myself a jig. I don't know whether the centre of the radius is, is this hole here. It looks like it, no, no, it's probably nearer here. Um, but yeah, um, sharpening could be a challenge, but we'll see. Uh, let's put this back in. Not everybody gets on with these planes. Remember, we have to turn this clock uh, anti-clockwise to get the blade in. Um, it'll be interesting to see how I get on with it because I, I, I know at least one luthier who's uh, not comfortable using these, these types of planes. So uh, there we go, that's the blade back in. Um, the, the handle is also adjustable. So you can, uh, you can bring it in and out. I think this moves as well. Yeah, there's a locking screw. So you can, you can take that further out if, uh, if you want it so to, to nest um, snugly in, in, in your palm and then you can just lock that in place with that uh, adjuster. Um, so uh, adjust it for the size of your hand. Um, but I, I like that. Now, for fine adjustment of this you have to very gently tap the blade. Um, which brings me on to my next acquisition. Final tool is this. This is from the BC Toolworks, lovingly wrapped. Obviously, I've, I've already unwrapped this, so it's uh, it's not wrapped quite as well as when I first got it. Never used this tool, been afraid to, as you'll see. Um, the BC Woodworks. I'll uh, put an address in the description, and I'm sure there'll be in a, a web address, probably just about here. Um, <laughs> Look, look at this for over the top presentation. Two different colours of tissue paper. But look at this. Um, beautiful hammer. Uh, Paduk handle as far as I'm aware. Beautifully finished. Very, very, very smooth. Very, it just feels great in your hand. And this beautiful highly polished brass head with a, a round, round head here 
and flat head here. I've been afraid to use this. <laughs> but what I can use it for... Um, actually, the, the, this... I guess you could use this as a fretting uh, hammer, but I've, uh, I've, I've got a fretting hammer, um, which is a dead blow. This isn't a dead blow, this is a solid head. Um, but, <laughs> if, you, if you need to adjust your blade, it is a, a plain adjusting hammer. Oh no, I've scratched it already. Oh, just doing that and I've scratched it. <gasps> this is the problem with having beautiful tools like this. Is you're afraid to scratch them, and I've just I've just scratched the head by tapping my A2 tool steel blade. Oh well, <laughs> I guess I've got to use it eventually. Um, yeah, but um, the idea with uh, with with planes uh, of this type is you, uh, you you just need a gentle tap on the blade to adjust it, and a tap on the on the sole to take the blade back that way. This isn't meant to be a masterclass on how to adjust plane blades. But uh, I'm not saying that I've bought this specifically for this plane, but um, I kind of just had to have this and now I've got a use for it. Oh no, and there's, there's, I've got several scratches on the head of the hammer. Oh, was this such a, a well thought out thing? Oh no, my poor hammer. A2 tool steel and brass. Well at least I know there won't be any marks on the A2 tool steel. The problem with uh, with hitting this with a steel hammer is uh, if you deform this, you're not going to be able to get this out. So uh, you want something a little bit uh, softer to hit it with. But uh, oh well, <laughs> it's scratched. Finally, <laughs> a huge thanks to Jerry Thompson of uh, Mac Thomas Guitars. I'll put a link underneath the video to his Facebook page because um, if you've been ke uh, keeping up with my videos about my acoustic guitar and my, my use of sapwood on, on the uh, fretboard, how about that for sapwood? <laughs> uh, thank you so much Jerry. I, I already have a uh, use for this planned, um, a project which is secret for now, um, but uh, I, I'm sure I shall make very good use of this. Thank you very much. Um, that's it. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, comment, and all those things. Bye!